Hey guys, what's going on? Well, I'm going to do just a quick demo on the Motorola Impress Field Programmer unit. Uh, this is made by Motorola. You can pick these up for about $275, I think. Uh, this is on loan. But it shows program, Programmer Ready, Steady Yellow, Programmer Busy, Flashing Yellow. Programming successful, steady green, and if there's an error, flashing red. Turn it over, you can see the controls here. You've got your power source, you've got your USB. USB, what you do is plug this into your computer, get a Motorola site, and you can upgrade the firmware in this box that transfers over to the chargers and then you've got your multi-pin connector you've got a status LED which is tricolor I believe yeah and then you've got start so what I've done already is there are four screws that you need to remove from an impressed single charger this one's already been upgraded I'll go ahead and do it Again, just as an example, but your four screws, uh, let's see here, uh, one, two, three, four. So this is an older charger. I've got new ones, but I just thought I'd do one on an older one. This has already been bumped up, but I'm just gonna uh, show this to you and show you how it works. Very nice, because what you have is you've got an AC power source and all you need to do is just plug this in plug it into your field programmer and you can see that the status is ready so it does give you Motorola will also uh, give you a booklet on proper usage, what you need to do, how you need to do it. Uh, 16 volt DC power, USB, 15 pin data, that's for data transfer, which uh, that's what this thing here is. And then you've got, you can see here there's a little, it's kind of sailor proof. I don't know if you can get a good angle on that or not but you've got a little tip right there, tip or tit or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then you've got your 15 pin. So, very simple to work this unit. Uh, it's very straightforward. I'm not going to go too far into this. It gives you ba just basic instructions. This may be in PDF, you may be able to find this in PDF, but the long and short of it is you can't, uh, you can't do, do much with the instructions. Although it does tell you, uh, it'll do multi-chargers, it'll do any impress uh, charging units. If you're working on a, on a six bay charger, you've got to take the cover off and you've got to do each individual bay separately. So you take the cover off and you'll see in this diagram here that we'll get to that you need to plug that in in this spot on each bay and if you've got an LCD that goes into a multi bay which is a six scanner uh, you're going to need to uh, you're going to need to let's see here you're going to need to also upgrade those LCDs. So you've got two per base, if you've got LCDs. If you don't, no problem. Anyway, uh, all you need to do here is this shell comes off. It just lifts off. You've got to be careful when you go to lift it off, but it's a very resilient uh, piece of hardware here. Uh, there's not too much to it. This is the main board. This right here 
is the business end of the firmware plug. So then you've got on some of these on the older uh, on the older things they've charger single unit chargers they put an AB switch on that AB switch. If what these things used to do is they used to give an audible hum uh, when there was a problem and so they put that AB switch on there to uh, defeat that hum well with they've corrected that with the new firmware you don't hear the hum so they've removed that switch that's very nice because a lot of people would have difficulty when they'd switch they'd sell them to departments a lot of guys would get them and wouldn't know what they were doing and that's they'd flip the switch and it really just confused everybody so it's nice that they they came out with the switch delete I think that worked uh, made a lot of sense but anyway all we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and line this up I'm gonna plug this in this charger does not need to be powered on the charging unit does not have to have power what I'm going to do here is all I've got to do is push start. Connection's good. And it takes about 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds. As it does this, it does to do diagnostic checks on it. And if it is bad, it's going to tell you. It's going to tell you with a, a flashing red. So right now, it is doing the firmware upgrade. It's very simple and very straightforward with a single unit. When you're working with a six ganger, it gets a little more difficult. Uh, you do have to, I believe you have to unhook one main wire, uh, one ribbon cable, I believe. I could be wrong. I, I've done like six of them, I don't know. Uh, but I I believe you have to undo a ribbon cable but anyway this is just upgrading the firmware and if you have like a 1.1.30 uh, then you know you'll wanna you know you'll most likely want to bump up to a better uh, to a better firmware on it or higher firmware on it but anyway, uh, it's very easy to do, and this should be done in just a, just a minute. Should be anyway. It can take up to a minute, probably. It just kind of depends. But. Yeah, it's an impressed field programmer. See, there we go, done. That's all it takes. So once that's done, simply remove this, push that button once, remove the cable, set it out, remove the power source, Take the housing. Uh, by the way, these do run on torque screws, so you do have to. I'm going to set this out of the way. You do have to use a torque torque screwdriver. But you just line this up very carefully and very easily. Everything's lined up on this. If you've got older chargers, uh, this one was a. Well, actually, it doesn't say what the firmware originally was but now it does uh, I suggest that you use a p-touch well any kind of labeler just don't mark on don't use pin uh, pin markers on things like that because you know I mean your firmware is going to be uh, upgraded if you're going to have these for a while if they come up with newer firmware 3.90 is the latest, 3.40 is fine, uh, but 3.90 corrects a lot of problems and you don't need to mess with the AB switch at all. And 
so you three point four O's uh mini or switch delete, so you don't have a problem with that. That's very nice. I actually thought at one point that uh that these switches were for voltage, but no, they were just uh uh for the older firmware it just made a humming uh a humming sound. But you don't need to do that with the new firmware. So, you get it? It's done. Let's go ahead and test it out. And, what do I do? I have an impressed battery. By the way, 2,500 batteries will work on these. There you go. That's all there is to it. It's a fuel programming unit for firmware made by Motorola. So, if you've got a lot of chargers like I've gone through, I've done about, I don't know, 50 or 60 in total uh, upgrades. That's all you really need to do. So it's very, very nice. And really, you know, if you're if you're at 3.40, you're probably fine. In fact, I don't think you need to upgrade it. But at the same time, uh, there's a reason why uh, there were upgrades uh, done to those. Some people say it was uh, minor, and it mo in most cases was. But if you have an older charger that gives you a hum, and if you have an older charger that uh, screws with you from time to time, it's probably a time to upgrade. Sometimes uh, the older chargers, the older firmware, won't read the batteries correctly. So, uh, but yeah, you'll need a Torx bit. But so what you do is you just upgrade the firmware. Once you upgrade the firmware, the problems resolve themselves, and that's all you need to do. Uh, you can pick that up from any Motorola dealer. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason uh, that they wouldn't wouldn't sell it to you. So, if you've got the money, they've got the device. And I think the firmware upgrades, at least for right now, uh, are at no charge on the Motorola site. So that's really all there is to it. And take it easy, guys. Thanks for the loan. Take it easy, guys. Later on.